Now that we've had a chance to design a database and normalize it, the next thing that we're going to do is actually create it using a database management tool. In this class, we're going to be using Microsoft Access. If you don't currently have Microsoft Access, there's several different ways that you can get it. The first way is free through Microsoft 360. That is the very first announcement that I posted out in this class, and it's a free online subscription to Office products. The second way is through Athena. If you check your syllabus, you can log into our CS department's Windows server and called Athena, and Athena has Microsoft Access on it. Another way is all of the classrooms, the computer science classrooms and the labs have access on them. So you can come into any of the computer labs or any of the CS department classrooms and you can gain access to it there. If you don't want to do any of those things, I guess the final option might be to just um, get a free trial version, although I would not recommend you doing that because there are so many other ways that you can gain access to it for free. I'm going to be doing this in Access 2016, so if you are using a different version, it might look a little bit different from what I am doing here in class. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a new blank database. I'm going to give it a name. We probably want to organize something besides Top Ramen and Music, so we're going to organize dogs. We'll call it our dogs, and then I'm going to click Create, and it is going to give me a new blank table. So if you notice the table, over here in the All Access Navigation on the left-hand side is called Table 1. So a table has a couple of different views. What we're looking at right now is called the Data Sheet view. This is where I would actually key in information into the table, but before I can do that, I need to add fields to it, and that's going to require me to go into the Design view. So I'm going to make sure that I'm up on the Table Tools at the top, um, Tables and Fields. If I click on Fields, one of the options is View. I'm going to go into the Design view. This is going to allow me to change the table name. I'm going to call it dogs. One word. I'm going to capitalize the D. Just one word. When I click OK, notice how it changed my, the name of my table to dogs. And now it's taken me to the design view where I can add the individual fields. So we have to decide what we would like to track about dogs. Not all 875 dogs, but just one dog. What are some of the things that I would like to know about dogs? I'm going to skip that very first field for just a minute and I'm going to use my arrow keys to move down to the next field. I'm pretty sure that one of the things that I would like to know about a dog is the dog name. Now, this is two words, dog name. I'm not going to include spaces in any of my field names. So I'm going to push those two words together, and then I'm going to capitalize the first letter of each word. So I don't want to have spaces in my field names. When I press the tab key, it's going to take me to the column called data type. This is going to allow me to choose the type of data that's going to be in there. And if I click the drop down arrow, you're going to notice that there's a variety of different data, types of data that I can store in there. For our purposes, we'll just make the dog name a short text. Depending upon the data type that I choose, the field properties are going to change. I want you to notice down here at the bottom the field size. Do you think that I need 255 characters for a dog name? Probably not, so how about if we just make this 45? When my sister was young, she had a purebred Afghan hound named Sir Tajmir Shurkan of Lucius. And so I'm going to make that field size 45 because I think some of those purebreds have some pretty, pretty long names. Another one of the options down here in field properties is required. So if I move down, about halfway down, there's a field that is required. I can toggle it to yes or no. Do I want this to be required so that it has to be filled in? Or there has to be something in it before the user uh, moves off this record. And I'm going to change that to yes. All right, so the next thing that we might want to know is breed. Probably going to want to know the breed of the dog. Once again, I'm going to choose short text. I'll make this one 25. And we'll change this one to required as well. Another thing that I want, might want to know about a single dog is age. I'm going to choose this one because what I'd like to have is a number of some kind. When I make this data type number, I'm going to have several options available to me. This first field is no longer field length or field size. Now it's the type of number that you want. There's an option between whole numbers or floating point numbers. We're going to make the age a whole number, so I'm going to change it to an integer. That's going to be like 5 or 15 or 7 or 9. Now, I'm going to say this is, I'm going to add a description or a note to this in years. If I make it a whole number, that means that if my dog is 12 months old, 
or seven months old, I'm either going to have to mark him as zero years old or one year. That's something to take into consideration as I'm building my database. So the next field that we're going to have is weight. And I'm choosing weight because I would like a number that is a floating point value. So I'm going to select a number. I'm going to go into the field properties in that first record, and I'm going to choose double. That is a floating point number. I can also indicate exactly how many decimal places that I want it to have. And so I'm going to force one decimal place so that the dog's weight is going to be 12.7 or 19.5 or 125.3 pounds. And in the notes section, I can put in pounds. If I want to no add notes to sell. So the next one is I'm going to have gender. A dog should be able to have gender. I'm going to make this one short test, and I really only need it to be one character long. There are really only four options available for gender, male, female, unknown, or alien, because when we discover life on Mars, we're going to need to be able to take into consideration their gender as well. So I'm going to change this field size to one in length. Then we're also going to choose whether or not your dog is spayed or neutered. I'm just going to call that fixed, and the reason why I want this field is because when I do a drop down, I see that there is a yes, no value. This is actually a Boolean field. We know the idea of Boolean from everything that we've studied so far about computers and the fact that they <clears throat> run on electricity, the absence or the presence of activity, on or off, yes or no, true or false. And so I'm going to add a Boolean variable into the mix just so I can see what happens when I try to query a database that actually has a Boolean variable in it. So let's come back to this first field right here. Because as I said before, every single table needs to have a primary key. And Microsoft Access, this DBMS, automatically added one for us as the very first field in a table. But I can change that if I want to. Do you think that dog name would be a very good primary key in a table that is going to contain all our dogs? If you do, there's two different ways that I can set that field as a primary key. I can right click on the column right beside it and choose primary key. Or I can select making sure that I'm on the table tools on the design tab, there is an icon called primary key. If I wanted a composite key, let's say weight, gender, and fixed, I can select, I can drag and drop or hold and drag all three of them and then select primary key and it will become a composite key between all three of them. I'm thinking that dog name is probably not a very good primary key because there's a very good chance that multiple people have a dog named Spot or Rover or George or a dog breed is definitely not going to be unique among every record in the file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow Microsoft Access to choose an auto number for me. I'm going to set that first one as the primary key again, and that auto number is going to automatically increment a number, a numeric value for every record that I add to the file. So once I've had a chance to add all of the fields that I would like to know about a single dog, now we're going to change out of the design view and go back into the data sheet view so we can find out a little bit about all of our dogs. The way that I'm going to do this is I am going to save what I have done so far. If you have not given it a name up until now, it will allow you to give it a name. Um, if I'm still in the Design View tab across the top and I click on the down arrow beside the view, now I can see Design View and Data Sheet View. If I try to move into the Data Sheet View without saving any of my changes, it will ask me if I want to save my changes. And now when I go into my data sheet view that looks remarkably like an Excel spreadsheet, I can see the fields that I created across the top. This is where I'm going to add all of the information that we would like to know about our dogs. If I am in my data sheet view and I decide that there was another field that I wanted to add, it's easy to come back under the view and go back into the design view and I can add one more. So this time we're going to add dog color. This is going to be short text. I don't need 255 characters for a black lab or a chocolate lab or a yellow lab, although that's breed. I'm just going to make this field 25 in length. I'm going to leave the required at no. I have several of them that are required because I would like to see if it will actually force me to have data in those fields. So we just like to be able to see how that works. So now that I've added color, I'm going to save it. When I try to go back into my data sheet view, if I haven't saved it already, it's going to make me save the changes. And now we're ready to start keying in information about our dogs.